welcome to chapter 5 of how to set up an online shop with Dreamweaver and PHP. Last chapter we stopped in the administration section. We have we had just one page which was the index PHP. Here we have the left menu and on the right side is where things were going to happen. What we're going to do first is to create a page to visualize the products, the product list. To do so we can either create a new page based on a template or we already have this index PHP one. What I used to do is to copy paste it. Control C, Control V. Then we edit the name to product list. I like to name it product. And then the action we're going to take with it. We press enter and then we have an exact copy of index PHP with a heading one, which is the previous heading text. Now the logical thing would be changing it for something like product list and we will delete this text below. Next thing we're going to do is to establish a connection to the database. Once we establish it, we can use it for the whole administration of the page. So here you probably won't have this tick as we haven't set up the test server. Anyway, it's very simple. You click in test server and, and do, you re, do you remember we had defined just one specification in local which was local machine, local network, shoes and the website was local host. You simply have to tick where it says test. This way you can have access to the database which is in local. We save and we already can see the tick in the point number three. What we're going to do first is a record test, a record set, sorry. A record set is a query to the database. If we click in record set, we get this menu. As I already have this connection established, I'm going to delete it so that we can see how to do it from scratch. I delete this, now I go to record set, and now there isn't any connection. Record set 1 is the name of the connection, but you can name it as you want. Let's define the connection. We get this window to define it. We click on new and we name the connection as connection shoes. In my SQL server, as now I'm on local, it will be local host, but this will vary when you are uploading your shop to a remote server. In the specifications of the domain and hosting, we'll tell you how to access my SQL. It's usually localhost too, but you have to pay attention just in case. The username in local is root with no password and now we can already select the database we've got. In this case, I will use shoes and click accept. Now it warns me that I haven't set a password. This is normal because if we have an unprotected database, anyone knowing the username can access it. But as we are local, we will leave it this way by now. We click OK and that's it. The connection is done. So we click OK again. And in this menu, we already have this connection. This is very comfortable because as you can see, in this menu, we have the three tables we created in chapter three or four. We can even see the names of the fields, etc. Now, we have two different views. And it's important we've got the simple view which is kind of easier and the advanced view I like using this one because later we're going to work with parameters and that stuff and I think this view is more professional and enable us to do more things what are we going to do this says select all from the table category but what we want is to select from the table product so we delete everything here I choose table product and click select. Now let's choose to select by name. We select uh, STR name, order by, and it is creating the query automatically. We can even add here to get an ascendant query from A to Z. We add ASC for ascendant. And with this, we have the query done. We click accept, and although here it seems nothing was happened. In the left side of the screen, you will see it has added a connection to the database. A code for the parameter stuff, 
and we have the connection as such select all from the table product order ascended by etc it's very easy next thing we're going to do is obtain this data on our screen that's simple in order to do so we're going to create a table in which we will put the product name the status and then a new cell that will be to modify products or delete products etc so we insert the table let's put two lines uh, because because the first one will go for the title or the field three columns and the percentage of 100% and the rest default we accept now it says there's a syntax mistake because as you can see it was selected so I'm going to take this then cut it to break not to break anything and paste it here right behind the heading one of product list now I click on the right side, it updates, and there it is. The first line goes to define the field I'm using. In this case, it would be product name. This one would be status. And here in the third column, I will write actions. So, now that I have to do here is to choose the fields I want to appear in each part. And I would put here the product name. You see it's generated automatically, it's corresponding PHP. I put status in the status field. And here in actions, I will put, for example, edit or delete, which will be the most frequent. If now I execute this page, <coughs> I won't obtain anything as I haven't added any data yet. So let's cut here or better let's do something too and it would be making this data to repeat now they appear here once but we are interested in repeating it for every product so we select from tr to tr which are the parts that define the line and in the server behavior part we click plus and ask it to repeat an area we ask to show 10 registers per page. We could ask for all of them, but we will choose just 10. The record set is the only one we have, so we choose it. Click Accept, and it has automatically created me a code. A do while, as you can see. <coughs> Meaning that this one, these 10 registers last. The definition of the 10 registers is here in the code, and it's important to know where it is in case we want to modify it. Maybe later we modify the page so much it doesn't allow us to reach here this is to happen so we can change it from 10 to 20 for example we please we're going to leave it in 10 as before and the next thing we're going to do in order to see how this works is adding a link to other products it's very easy we write here add product i'm going to save this page now with ctrl s i'm going to do it for the last time with file save because you have to get used to the to the other way In, in that product we are going to change create a new page so we copy paste it and we ch and change the name to products add php we open the products add php page and it's a copy of index php so we change the heading name to add product we delete this and now we're going to use the Dreamweaver system to add the product. To do so, we click Insert, Data Objects, Insert Register, and Register Insertion Form Assistant. This will make our work much easier. The connection is the only one we have. The table, the one I want to add, is Table Product. And after inserting, what I want is to go to the product list. I could create a page that said, okay, your product has been added, but as you like. I'm going to this so that it goes to product list PHP. And now it shows me a list of fields which are those I'm going to insert. I will delete ID product because it's a field I'm not interested in handling now. We modify the name of STR name to name, where it shows us what kind of field it is, so it will be a text field. 
the the positioning will also be a text field the price will also be a text field and it has detected that there are decimals and asked me to define it as a floating comma number the INT status can be done with a 0 or a 1 but bearing in mind that a client will be using it it would be more interesting showing an active inactive field so we will leave the label as status and in show as we will choose menu menu properties and we have a new window I will fill the menu elements by hand so the first field of the menu will have in the label active with value of 1 I add a new field named inactive with a value of 0 we accept and finally the category field which will be a selection of the existing categories by now we will leave it like this because we haven't made the categories query yet but later we will include it we will leave it we will leave it initially as an integer and we save as you can see it has already generated a data entry form I forgot to delete this double thing the person entering the page doesn't care if that value is a double or an integer or whatever but you can see it has generated here selector regarding status let's fix the categories for us to get the category list here although we haven't created any yet but let's generate a field in order to do so we need to add a new query that finds us a category list so we go to the plus record set instead of record set 1 and not to confuse it we will name the set as query categories the connection will be the same and I will ask to take me all the categories order by description order by we ask for the order to be ascendant from A to Z and we accept nothing has happened because we have just added in the left side this query that makes us to the categories why do we do this? because we're going to use it here so in this field called int category I'm going to blow it and I'm going to insert a new field insert form here it is menu list I will leave this as a default so I click accept and it has created a blank field now we have to fill in this field with the category values so I can fill the list values by hand which we won't do now or else dynamically this is what is interesting for us since every time we add a new category it will appear there straight away I select dynamic and then I go to record set query categories which is the one we have just created the values will be ID category and the label will be the str description we will leave select a value equal to blank because I don't want it to select any default value and I accept now you can see here the amount of code is has added without typing anything this will bring me a category list in the drop down menu there is a detail left which is naming this field as the previous one int category we type int category press enter and it updates automatically and this other field is a register we can call it insert product and that's it with this we have the product insertion and the product list so let's see on this in uh, navigator to see how it looks we save with Control S, open the navigator, and we go to localhost, choose admin. As we haven't created the left menu, we cannot access yet. So uh, <coughs> let's make it in a moment. So we close these windows and 
And do you remember I have the left menus in the, in the heading admin PHP? So let's have a menu name, product list. And we want this product list to link us to products list PHP. It will create an automatic link which is double dot stroke admin. So let's see if this works. Probably we'll have to modify it, but in order to make this more elegant, we have to press intro here. We save. We get back to the navigator, we update, and you see we already have this here. If I hit products list, we will get all these products name, status, no products, because the list is still empty. We, we forgot to link the add products, we will do it now. So we go to products list, we open it, and we're going to link this add product list uh, PHP to products add. We save, we go back to navigator and update. And here it is. We go to add product, and here we have the form to insert a new product. As you can see, we have no categories yet. Why? Because we haven't created any yet. So the next step in chapter 6 will be generating all these things we have done for the categories. Well, I hope I haven't been just too fast, and I hope you've been able to follow everything step by step. And when in the next chapter we press in product, we will see how it works. So I hope you like this, and uh, I'll see you in chapter 6. Regards.